Hello, teachers. Dash Young Saber here from Skew the Script, here to walk you through our lesson 4.2 on random sampling methods. This is one of my absolute favorite activities to use during the school year, and it differs from our traditional lesson format. So I want to make a quick video walking you through how to use the materials in class. If you've followed our site for a while, you might be familiar with the original version of this activity, which looks at the city of San Antonio and uses different random sampling methods to estimate incomes, household incomes within the city. But now, thanks to a collaboration with our great friends at the University of Chicago Center for Spatial Data Science, we've been able to expand this activity to include more cities across the United States, including potentially a city that you're in or a city near you. To look at all the different cities we offer this activity for, if you go to the map all cities link, that's going to pull up a folder with all the different cities that we offer the activity for. And say that you are your school is in or close to St. Louis, you can pull up the St. Louis map and use this as the map for the activity with your students. So this is a map of St. Louis, like all the rest of the maps of the activity, has 100 households that are representative of the neighborhood that those households are in. And the goal of the activity is to use the different sampling methods from AP Stats to get small samples of this population and see if we can get a good estimate for the median household income in the city, and then talk about the implications of our results. So this is the map of the city. It's divided into several regions, and all the different households and their incomes are listed here on the second page. And on the last page, you're going to compile your class's results from all their samples and analyze them as a class. Now, that sounds like a lot. Thankfully, we do offer some instructions. So the activity instructions can be found here. And this is the student facing version where you'll find instructions for every different sampling method that students can be using to analyze their maps. And in addition, maybe the most helpful thing is this activity key, which has all the different teacher notes for how to walk through this activity with students. And in here, you'll find step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step instructions going through every single detail that you might want to know, including, for example, going through the map with students and marking landmarks they might be familiar with to orient them to the map, how to seed the calculator so that you get a bunch of different random samples, et cetera, et cetera. So usually the activity is done during day one if you have a 50 to 55 minute class period and you do the sampling methods with students. By the end, you're gonna have a sampling distribution um, set at the end of your map. And we have a key here linked here, which again has a drive full of all the different cities. And we have the key here for St. Louis. If you look at the final page on the map, you'll see what potential class set of samples might look like. And you'll get to see how well each sampling method will probably do in trying to uh, estimate the true median household income in the city. So day one, the activity is going through that process with students, having them get hands-on with those sampling methods. Day two is talking about the results and talking about the different trade-offs between the sampling methods. And if you have a block schedule, you have 80 to 100 minute class periods, you could do both these in the same day. However, if you have like 45 minute to 60 minute classes, I recommend doing day one as the activity. Day two is these post-activity notes. So if you pull up the post-activity notes, You'll see we talk about bias versus variability, and we go through every sampling method in the activity to talk about pros and cons of each. And then there's a discussion in which students talk about the school finance as part of analyzing incomes in a city. And just as with the activities key and, uh, um, and maps, we also offer post-activity notes key that has a set of solutions as well as discussion notes for the discussion part of the activity. So that's it for a walkthrough of Lesson 4.2. Again, this is one of my favorite activities to use throughout the school year, and I hope you're able to use it with your students and lead them through some engaging, thoughtful discussions in class.